Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to a timeless pick a card reading. Today I thought we could take a look at the topic, what are you learning or what have you been learning lately? I think that's what we'll do. What have you been learning lately? That's nice because that's kind of recent, what's happening for you now. And I thought I'd do that topic because I have been learning so many things. I'm always learning things. <laughs> Let's take a look. So group number one, group number one, you've got this beautiful Dalmatian Jasper. Okay, so that might be your stone. Or group two, we've got Honeycomb Agate. Try and focus that. Have a look at that. Or group number three. You've got this lovely milky agate, I think they call it. All right. Camera battery is flashing, so I am going to stop it here and switch that. Hold on a moment. Hi everyone, just recording this little segment the next day. I remember that a couple of you had asked last week, would I share the authors who had said that women should say no more often. So I talked about it in the monthly just now, which I've just uploaded, but I should have put a bit more context in the monthly. I just <laughs> was like, oh, I'm making a video. and everyone's in my head and I forget that most people who watch the monthly don't watch the pick a card. I should have given more context. Um, why are these authors, firstly who are the authors? Okay it's Gabor Mate, he's done great work around telling women and anybody who's suffering from chronic illness really that they should learn to say no more often. Okay so that's his work is, is in that vein. And then Jordan Peterson has done a lot of work empowering women as well. Even though I think when he first came on the scene he was, people said that he's really sexist and this and that, but no, I watched that. Was He did an interview with someone on Channel 4 that went viral and yeah, that anyway, that whole thing seemed like a setup. But he, he has done good psychological counselling type work empowering women. He really has and if you have a look at some of his recent shorts videos, I don't think he's publishing them, a whole bunch of other people are publishing them, but have a look at Jordan Peterson on the shorts and when it comes to Gabor Mate, have a look at him in regards to chronic illness and he says that more women get chronic illness than anyone else and he says that it's because they don't know how to say no, they keep taking on board the demands of everybody else but they don't know how to rest and I think that's really important for women to take a look at and with all this conversation around being empowered and having good boundaries and looking after yourself I found another great coach now she's called Bhardhyana Swami Tiera and I found her just recently and I found her through a video that went viral a bit. Uh, I think this one's the one I clicked on. I clicked on it because it said don't baby your man or something like that. I thought wow that's a cool topic. It has that on the thumbnail and anyway I think that the video that went viral for her is called Relations, Two Types of Love and the Power of the Woman and I thought oh I want to watch that. So definitely check her out. I think she's got really beautiful content. I've watched a few of her videos. They are terrific. I'm, I feel like I'm going to binge watch some of her videos this weekend. So take a look at her work and it's funny that she, she did this don't baby your man thing because um, I think I kind of felt like that concept came up in, in one of the groups this time actually. So yeah I mean have a look guys, see, see what you like. But I, I think she seems to be a superb guide. Uh, I just love her flowing white hair and you know I can't wait to I'm, I'm not going to dye my hair I'm, I, I want my hair to look something like hers if, if at all possible. 
So check out all these cool people and I'll let you get on with your reading. Hi there group one. If you chose group number one or this lovely Dalmatian Jasper then you are in the right place. I've just changed the battery. I really do hope this lasts because I did I charge these batteries. They are fully charged but what I notice is that if you don't use them for a couple of days I think they, they tend to wear out a bit or I'm not sure. Well anyway let's go for one of these. Take that one. I'll take, I hope, I really hope this camera battery lasts. Oh, I see. This card doesn't particularly fit. Well, this one certainly won't fit. These are massive. There's a bit of sheen on there. Probably a bit of moisturizer, hand moisturizer. Oh, look at that. This is no good. How are we going to fit? to move back. How do we do that? Is that better? Yeah, it's a lot better. Hang on. What if I do that? Oh, that's much better. Okay, good. Right. <laughs> How very professional of me. <laughs> Guys, I have been having just the most crazy day I have been. Well, I've been busy, but I mean, oops. everything, look at that. All right, we're taking it, three of wands. Everything today has not gone how I thought it would go. <laughs> I've been having one of those days. Monday was superb. Everything ran to time. I even had extra time. It was incredible. I was just, oh, that was a good day. So. How did today just slip out of my hands? I don't know. We'll just pop that there. All right, let's see what's going on. Group number one. So, well, you chose this beautiful Dalmatian Jasper. And this is a lovely stone. I looked up the properties and it did say playfulness. It said lightheartedness, things like that. So maybe you're learning what you're learning lately is how to relax a little bit or how to go easier on yourself, how to enjoy time, make sure you are enjoying time, doing fun things. Let's see what cards you've got. All right, safety. Interesting. We've got all these little sheep. Oh, and the sheep feel safe amongst these. What are these? Are they foxes? Let's see if we can focus in on those. Yeah, you know, I tend to think that is when you're at your safest. It's like if you can really fall asleep deeply, then that indicates that you feel very safe. Okay, let's bear that in mind. Got number three there as well. Man holding a coin. Okay. Right. 43. Number seven. See, see what else we've got. Main female. Okay. So number two. Well, don't these two go good together? Let's have a look. Do they go good together? Let's have, I mean, yeah, their outfits are pretty similar, like from the same era. They seem like a good match. He's holding a coin, she's holding a flower. All right. Neither of them look particularly happy though. Whoops, sorry, it wasn't even focused. Let's see if we can zoom in on these two a little bit. I don't know, they're both looking a bit, hmm. She doesn't look very happy. <laughs> what does he look like? I'm trying to see his face. I, yeah, I'm going to say, I don't know, he doesn't, I'm, I'm getting this non-convincing vibe. Okay, let's keep going here. Safety. Maybe you're in some kind of love situation where neither of you feel safe. Oh, wow, moon in the fifth house, that's nice. That's a good 
placement. Let's see this. Happiness from children acquires jewels and properties. Native is honest, noble, learned, spiritual. Child may be famous, talented artist, abundant emotionally. Mm. And we've got the three of wands here. And the three of wands is this, you're looking out to the horizon. Maybe you've set something out, you're waiting for a response or yes, they sometimes say with this card, like you're waiting for the ships to come back in. Maybe you've sent ships out or you, you've sent something out, you're waiting, yeah, as I say, for a response or for something to come back in. This could be to do with love life because we've got these two here. But it's really interesting, we've got safety and we've also got, this is the inner child deck, so we are to expect illustrations from this deck that are quite childlike but it's very interesting we've got moon appearing twice so there is like a theme of children here maybe if you have children this is a real message to say spend time with your kids because we've also got this stone so there is something about spend time with your children help make them feel safe could also be that your inner child is not feeling safe as well. Your inner child is not feeling safe. If this is a love situation, it could be that neither of you are feeling safe or maybe you're in a situation in a relationship where, you know, one of those situations where like both of you are down, like, you know, if you look at things going up or down, in a relationship and sometimes one of you is up but the other one is down maybe both of you are down at the moment and maybe both of you are yeah kind of like if you're in child mode you're kind of needy isn't it like there's neediness here so it could be something along those lines okay Let's see, I want to take a Vedic Astrology card, another one. I want to see a little bit more. What's with safety? I want to find out about safety. Why is safety card here? Hmm. All right, that one absolutely flew out and it fell onto the ground. So I'm going to, I can see it's Mars. Oh, I hope I'm not coming up on the camera. Oh. Mars, oh, in the seventh house. That dropped out. Yeah, this, this is not such a good planet to have when it comes to uh, relationships. Let's have a read here wants to win arguments or clients yes makes a great lawyer or surgeon may marry twice yeah loves passion look i mean it's a passionate placement sure but um look at that marries twice it's like you know it can be hard to maintain a marriage with mars in the seventh okay because the warrior is here warrior wants to be right Warrior, what do, what the warrior want to love for? They want they want to fight and they want to win. <laughs> That's what a warrior does. Owns properties if afflicted, experiences losses. Yeah. Okay, so maybe there's some kind of stalemate in a relationship that could be here, and maybe you're just in a period of waiting. What's going on? It's really interesting. We've got like man here right mars man but we've got moon here which is child so as i say there could be something about inner child if you're a lady this is a very literal thing what i'm going to say here but if you're a lady you could be dealing with a man child you know or something like that um where yeah somebody wants to be right but they don't want to love. What is being loving? Being loving is being vulnerable, right? It's not about being right. 
You risk something of yourself in love. You, you don't, um, you, as you see, because it's so risk, yeah? Safety. If, if, if you're only in your comfort zone, now this could be you, but this could be your person, okay? So I'm not sure, but this is the vibe that's here that's being depicted by these cards. And what's being depicted by these cards is that uh, somebody wants safety and they want to win, quite possibly. When it comes to the other, seventh house of the other, um, this person wants to win. They want to win more than they want to be in love. And here we've got, this is a very in love kind of a thing, moon in the fifth. Yeah, that is. But it's but it's childlike love. So it's a I need you to show me that you love me. It's not a confident well I'm going to I'm going to show you. Or like a Mars type would be a I'm going to come and get you or something like that, you know. But I'm not getting any bad vibes here or any of that um you know maybe just a bit of waiting so what are you learning i think you're learning all about all these things i think you're learning about the dynamics in a relationship i think you're learning how to be patient this character here is waiting and that's a good thing like i think real love true love all that requires a lot of patience so you're probably learning how to be patient and you're probably learning uh, how to risk something of yourself. Or if you're, and as I say, if you're a lady in this situation, you're learning that you want a man who'll risk something of himself. He doesn't need so much of all this safety and security and all that kind of thing. I think you're learning what you want from a relationship. I think that's what the learning is that's going on right now. And we've also got this stone of, did I mention this thing about being playful and lighthearted and all of that? Gosh, the camera lighting is a bit strange today. Apologies, everyone. Do you know what it is? I think it's my batteries aren't freshly, aren't freshly charged. They're kind of two or three days old charge. So the color's gone a bit weird. What can I do? Today has just not gone how I wanted it to. <laughs> I should have, I would have been more organized and I would have freshly charged the batteries. Anyway, I'm learning time management clearly. All right. So we've got here, looks like Oscar Wilde. It's going to focus. Come on. To live is the rarest thing in the world. Most people exist. That's all. Oscar Wilde. Yeah, and I think that's the safety card. You know, that's why the safety card has come because it's like somebody is not living. Uh, somebody staying in the comfort zone is what we can see here. And that could be you. That could be somebody in your experience being reflected back to you. Okay. So we've got that one. Let's see what this one is. Oh, this is good. Come on, focus. See, it's a tired battery. That's what we've got going on here. All right. <laughs> the battery is just existing. It's not living. Um, what have we got? So the two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. Mark Twain. Yeah. Yeah, and I think uh, we could summarize that. I think the safety card is brilliant why that's come here because we're all born to step out of the comfort zone, isn't it? We're, we're born to uh, explore and experience and try different things. And two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. And if that day is yet to come, that's wonderful, you know. I think it's um, the mystery of life is actually what is fun. The not knowing, you know. 
Yeah. Well, group number one, I hope this has been a good reading for you. Let me know how you got on in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. I apologize about the lighting. It has been very up and down. Uh, but thank you for joining. We are now going to welcome group number two. So I'm going to keep the camera rolling because, because we've got battery problems. And some of you have mentioned that you do watch all of these. So that that is, yeah, I've, I've heard a few people say that. Because each reading represents some different aspect of your life. Makes sense. Uh, I don't really mind how people, you know, do that. All right. So um, some tarot readers have rules about that. They say, well, you can only watch one and things like that. Ah, I'm pretty easy about that. Okay. Group number two. Let's see what's going on. You chose. Oh, dear. I'm making a mess. You chose group two. You chose the honeycomb agate and this is a really pretty stone. I really like the color. It's got that golden orange color. We've got a bit of yellow here. We've got a bit of orange here. This could be second chakra. This could be third chakra type stuff. Could be relationships, could be self-empowerment, honeycomb, bees, you're working hard, you're busy. I'm going to see what are you learning at the moment. All right, I'm going to reach over, try and do that without knocking the camera. How are you, group two? I hope you're having a good week wherever you are. I hope you're having a good day. I'll take one of these. We'll clarify with the Vedic astrology deck. Nope. That one wants to pop out. All right, good. Right, group two, let's see what's going on. Oh, this is nice. I love it. Friendship. That's pretty. And I like this little teepee tent thing that they're in. Oh. oh, that's really pretty. Look at them. They're, they're cozy in there. Look at that. Are they reading books? Oh, that's so cute. They're reading books together. Oh, <laughs> I love that. That's really nice. Magician in the mirror. Oh, and magician and the mirror. Sorry, but I said magician in the mirror. Why did I say that? Hmm. Magician and the mirror. This is kind of temperance like because we've got fire in one hand and we've got water in another. Okay, very nice. community yeah there's a real friendship thing going on here oh, and I just had a honk outside I hope that comes up on the recording all right it's a real sort of this kind of 11th house Aquarius type vibes wheel of fortune Ooh. and that's here which is kind of so we really need to draw more cards to get more of a story going. I mean, clearly we're dealing with your friendship circles. And that's interesting that I said the orange and the yellow. So we've got the orange, which is the second chakra, which is other people. And that's friends. That can be friends, it can be family, sacral chakra, it can be lover, partner. So, all right, Wheel of Fortune. We need to keep this story going, so let's see what comes here. Aha! Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, it's all right. Mars in the sixth house. Victorious leader, yes. Defeats competition. Focused on justice. Rebuilds after loss. Argues with authority. If afflicted, must face justice. Physically robust. Well, what I'm going to say here is if you're in some kind of situation 
there's something about you being victorious. So what are you learning? Hmm. Okay, so but there's something about if you're in some kind of situation and it's to do with friends or a community or you're wondering what's going to be happening when you need a sign or there's something about you being victorious. So that's for sure. There's something you might win or you might win. Maybe you're learning as well. Maybe you're learning how to successfully compete. Maybe you're learning uh, physically robust. Yeah, but I'm getting this robustness in terms of, um, what do they call it? Sportsmanship, brinksmanship. They call it like being a good sport, competing, like the fun of the game, the joy of competing. Like there's something about you, what you're learning, yeah, is being in the world but not of it, but having fun, like, but competing, which is kind of interesting. Okay, let's get, which card do I want to, what do I want to clarify? I want to use one of these. I want to clarify Magician and the Mirror. Okay. Page of Swords. Yeah, you are in learning mode. And I'm just getting in my head, you're learning how to be yourself. This is classic self and other work that you're, I would say, learning, learning and refining. I also had the, this is why I said learnery or whatever I said, mastery, because the word mastery was coming in as well. There's a refinement you're doing at this time when it comes to you being yourself and you successfully being with other people and you being able to be with other people but not lose yourself, you being able to be with other people and still look after yourself. Something about you learning that that life is fun and that there's like that it's a game as well that there's like a game component to life that you got to play the game kind of thing you got to be in it something like this this is really interesting i mean this could be work related as well and this could be connected to the community at at work We'll take one more. We'll take one of these and just see if there's any more information. This is all nice though. This is all good energy here. This is great. Take that one. So yeah, this is... Uh... Oh good, yes. All right, well, this is great. Saturn in the third house becomes own boss. I mean, this could be... What are you learning? You're, pro you're possibly learning how to be your own boss or how to do your own thing um comprehension slow pace steady friendships yes again friendships and relationship with father restricted success after disappointments winning again it's like so this is a real thing of you are going to win but if it's taking time we've had saturn turn up here something might be taking time but keep putting the effort keep on the path keep doing what you're doing it's all going to be worth it and when the wheel turns, victory is yours. Okay, so that, that process might take a bit of time. But you're on the right path. And there's a strong keep going message for sure. So definitely keep going. You're doing great. So th there's all good vibes here. Honestly, this is nice. And this could be a thing of um, take some time out. Have, have some... Fun time with your friends. You know, we've got December coming and that's interesting. I did the monthly. I was supposed to edit the monthly today. I ran out of time, but I'm, I will get to it. Um, but there was a lot, there were a lot of messages about, yeah, have time with your friends, you know, energy is changing now towards the end of the year. Let's have a look. Oh, this is good. Gee, I kind of wish this was in the last group. <laughs> uh, I've got here, right, I've got here, you can never cross the ocean until you have courage to lose sight of the shore. Christopher Columbus. 
I get a sense though that you're on the path, you're doing it. I, I don't feel like there's any courage deficit here. It's just slow because we do have a courage indicator come in here. Saturn is materializing, manifesting your courage, building it up constantly. Okay, so your courage is being built up constantly. So don't worry, maybe you don't feel courageous. It's all right, keep going on this path. You're doing great. You, you just got to keep going. You've got to hang in there. This is one of those pathways that will pay off with perseverance. And there are a lot of people who lose out in life just because they don't. I mean, look, there's both. Sometimes people try for too long at a game that isn't going anywhere. That's true. But then equally, I've seen, I've seen more often than not that if you lack the staying power, that's a problem. That I've seen that more than than the other way yeah good to have staying power something about but there's a, there's a message here of you having staying power you doing exactly what you're doing all right let's see what this one is very little is needed to make a happy life it is all within yourself in your way of thinking Marcus Aurelius yes I love that this is a great quote very little is needed to make a happy life. This is so true. And when I think about, I've, I've said this on a pick a card before, but I'll say it again. When I think about the things that I'm grateful for that make me really happy, they're usually really simple things. It's not anything extravagant. Well, but maybe, I mean, maybe I'm trying to think what extravagant things have I done or enjoyed and that maybe I'm not the right person to make that comparison because I haven't. No, but I kind of have. Like in Jupiter Mahadasha, I did get to have some experiences that were very extravagant thanks to the companies I worked for. And yeah, it's like, I don't know, there wasn't much in there and all those places or, you know, if they take you to a fancy dinner or something. I don't know. I prefer simple things. And that's what this quote is. Very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself, in your way of thinking. Yeah, I, the small things make me happy. And for me, I, get, I think I get my most happiness and enjoyment from being creative. If I make something, even if it's terrible, I really like it <laughs> because I made it. <laughs> I get a lot of happiness from that. Yeah, it's funny that. But I, you know, and that's so this is, this is, okay, this is also an entrepreneur thing as well. When I've watched Dragon's Den, like the business people, some of the business people that turn up there, because we've got Saturn in the, the you, you're your own boss, you, you're an entrepreneur, you're making your business, right? So people who are on that Dragon's Den show, a lot of them for years, they're just paying themselves the minimal amount you know and yeah me too I'm in that phase like yeah and but you're happy and you, you love doing what you do and you'd rather be doing what you do than somewhere else and earning a big pay packet there's something special about creating your own path I kind of feel group number two that that's that's you and you're doing amazing with that so keep going definitely definitely keep going all right group two thank you so much for joining we are now going to welcome and we keep the camera rolling uh we're going to welcome group three so group three how are you well i'll just clear up all of this first I just pop these on top and then I shuffle. Well, maybe I should put, put them in the middle. There we go. Because last time, remember what happened last time? Pop those there. Yeah, group three, you're going to need some uh, big shuffling. <laughs> we had, we you did not have proper shuffling last time. All right, group number three. Welcome, group three. If you chose this milky agate but it could also be this could also be interpreted as being a gray rock as well i did think about group three should have a gray rock this time i do have one in my collection somewhere it's like a pebble that i got from brighton which i turned into like a necklace thing 
So, but yeah, you could consider this a grey rock. <laughs> Uh, milky agate, what would a milky agate be? Maybe a bit of milky, so moon type vibe. Let's see. Let's see what comes in the cards. I'll try to shuffle properly this time as well as I did last time. I still remember your reading last time, group three. It was very interesting. Hopefully this will be... I don't know. Hopefully the energies have calmed down. They're simpler or something. What are you learning? Gosh, did I cover that in the previous? I think I did. Did I answer the question? <laughs> I think I did. What are you learning? All right, let's focus. Let's have a focused reading on the topic. Oh, sometimes I'm not very good at that. Today has not been a demonstration of that at all. Everything has been off schedule and out of control. So let's focus you. All right, what are you learning? What are you learning? What have you been learning lately? What are you learning? I've got the moon here. Maybe you are tucked away. Well, we won't do that one. Oh, oh no, they all dropped. Oh, I can see those, but they're too many. No, we're going to... I'm going to pop them in. Whoops, I'm making a mess, aren't I? All right, let's see. Is that upright? Yes, we want these all to be upright. There we go. All right, let's shuffle. What are you learning lately? What have you been learning? What have you been learning? Ooh, resource. 40, nice. This is good. Oh, what are these doing? These little ones. Is it prayer? So they're in nature. All this beautiful grass, flowers. Maybe they're doing yoga together. That's really nice. Okay, maybe, well, we'll understand as we go along. Resource, the, the thing that popped into my mind was resourcefulness. Maybe you're learning how to be resourceful. Maybe you're learning how to do more with less or something like that. Victory, wow, that's nice. Number one, we had a four earlier. Four is like a stability number, but it's also a Rahu number. This is one, two and eight makes 10, which is one, one and new beginning, victory. Okay, so that's, that's nice. Toil and labor, <laughs> yeah. And she's so appropriately wearing dark blue. <laughs> yes, that would be right, all right. Saturn appears in the reading, good. Nine of Wands. Oh, excellent. Well, I think you're learning how to be resourceful. I think you're learning how to do your own thing. Nine of Wands, this is like a, you're on your own here. There is not anybody else. Resource could also be resources, like that resources are coming in for you as well. I think you've been working really hard. And I think you've been, we've possibly been learning how to be more efficient, how to be more resourceful. But I think you're focusing on you, you're focusing on your path, you're focusing on building your career, building your business, building what you do, building your skills. This is it, you know, look at that. She's got her head down and she's got her hands, she's focused, she's working. She doesn't have time for much else. And this is like, and she's a she here too. And she's guarding her territory. And that all looks very good to me because whatever it is that you're doing or whatever it is you're working towards, there's victory here for you. And I think that this is in terms of 
yeah, success and financial abundance. But look at that. There's a little group here. Maybe you're going to do group workshops or you're going to work with people. You're going to collaborate as well. Or, but there's, there are people here, but it's not too many people. It's a nice number of people. This is all doable. But there's something about you doing this, and but you're... You're in charge as well, something like that. You're in charge. Okay, so let's... And yeah, something about you learning to do it yourself. Because we've got the moon here. And the moon is like... The moon can be child childhood or something along those lines. Let's focus in on that. Child energy, but it's like... This is like a healthy inner child that wants to, this is like, I want to do it myself. I want to learn it. I want to be good at this. So there's something of maturing here as well. It's interesting because we've got Saturn here. We'll see what planets, let's see what planetary energies show up. We might take a couple of these. Oh, Ketu in the ninth. Wow. Okay. Good. All right, really wanted to be here. Okay, so that's interesting. We just we were just talking about maturity, and there's there's this thing of the child, but there's this thing of the adult, and that Saturn is like old age, but we got Ketu, which is like past lifetimes, ancient old age. But these women here look very useful, don't they? Something about your learning. Oh yeah, I just heard that phrase to grow yourself up or to mature, which is weird, but it's like, even if you're like, I don't know, in your 80s or whatever, it doesn't matter. It's like, because apparently all, it's all the now, like, so yeah, again, I, I'm not, I don't know exactly how that stuff works, but all right, we're, we're going to, I'm going to read that out, but I just want to see, ah, Saturn in the fifth. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. I know exactly what that's about. All right. All right. All right. All right. Ketu in the ninth though. So what are you learning? I think you're going to learn. You've got all the knowledge within you. There isn't, you don't need to. Okay. So when I see people who've got a Ketu in the ninth, these people, they just walk into a PhD program. They just, they just pick up a doctorate in something. It's not hard for them. I've seen that many times. And why is that easy for them? Because they've studied it in past lives. They've done it before. So not only do they not need to work as hard as everyone else, but they can innovate. They can do cool things with all the learnings, what they've accumulated over past lifetimes. Because when you're doing a PhD, if you're doing a PhD properly, you're creating something brand new. It's, you're innovating, really. You have to create some kind of little niche that no one's ever done that before, and that's why you're doing that intense work. So you're going to innovate on your path and maybe that's where the child thing is. Maybe you're new to, and as I said, it doesn't matter if you're in your 80s. We've got Saturn here appearing twice. So it doesn't matter how old you are physically. The new thing that you're learning is how to tap your own wisdom that you've built up over many, many lifetimes. Oh, and I just had the phrase, giving yourself permission to do that. Yeah. See, we didn't have a page of swords come here. No. So your, your skills, your knowledge is very mature and fully formed. It's just about you tapping that now. Okay, that's great. And then we've got, I love this, Saturn in the fifth. So it'll be interesting to see what I've got written here because I've got something to... Oops, I just pressed that to focus it. How embarrassing. All right, come on, focus. There we go. Uh, you know when you tap the camera screen? Anyway. brings Saturn in the fifth brings responsibility to creativity, marriage and children are delayed. Yeah, that is true. Knows their strengths and weaknesses. Succeeds after many challenges. Yeah, but I should also include in here 
um, the person who's you're at the party but you're working okay so that is Saturn is the person who's at the party they are at the party but they're working so it can, and that could be in a service type role you could also be serving the king you could be the consultant to the king and maybe there's something like that with the work that you do like you serve your customer like they are your king or queen which is a lovely energy to embody if you're a service professional but you're working you're busy and even if you're at a party you're working you're not uh, sitting around I might have mentioned this on the channel actually I mentioned this um, but it got yeah we did it didn't end up making the cut I mentioned this thing about so I, there's this luxury vlogger that I watch and she went to this Dior party in London and anyway who did they have there they had a tarot reader a professional tarot reader so they had a DJ and they had a they had a tarot reader and I just thought that is so cool like wouldn't that be a great gig I mean not that I'd want to do that but <laughs> but that, that could be fun <laughs> But yeah, I mean, yeah, I, and I think this stuff is becoming cooler and more mainstream and more acceptable. So look, this is important information for some of you out there because if you are a light worker or you're running your business, don't think small, think big. You know, you could be, um, and there are, I, I've also heard, and this was someone at board level at British Gas who had uh, taken consulting style advice from a tarot reader. And she, anyway, she said, to the guy what should I put on the invoice should I put something else and he said no I want you to put tarot reading he said I want people to know where the money has gone I just thought wow that is interesting I found out about him through this thing I did one time it was called family constellations and one of the guys who worked there I think he was really high up in British gas but not at the time of the family constellation thing but I've probably mentioned that one on the channel before anyway but yeah I think you're learning um, to be innovative to call on your guides and angels or, or, or past lives whatever it is you've got access to a ton of information you, you've got the answers at your fingertips basically K2 in the ninth and for this Saturn in the Fifth, when, I, when I've had um, people who, you know, come for a reading and they're Saturn in the fifth, I say to them that, well, your clients can be the top, top, top people. Don't think small, think big with what you can do and who your clients could be. All right, let's take a look what's in here. Oh, nice. Yeah, I like that. Yes. Life does not owe you anything because life has already given you everything. Yes, Ralph Marston, this is exactly this nine. Don't be thinking, oh, I need another qualification. Oh, I need another this. Oh, I need to read that book. Oh, I haven't done enough. Oh, I'm not good enough. I don't know. No, you have everything now, okay? You've really, really, really got everything you need to make your life a success. There's nothing you're missing and you're not missing anything believe me you've got every single thing that you could possibly want great 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 love it yes all right that is good like it what else do we have you're very abundant look at all that green there you've got so much abundance there's nothing you're missing The price of anything is the amount of life you exchange for it. Henry David Thoreau. Yes, exactly. And I, I, we talked about this last time, didn't we, Group 3? We talked about this concept of um, exchanging life or your time, which is the same thing, for money. And remember, money is of lesser value than life. Money is lesser value than time. So make sure whatever it is that you're doing, it's thoroughly, you love it, you enjoy it, that you'd, you'd pay to do it. 
you know and I tell you with this business <laughs> I don't like to talk about this it's not uh, something to be proud of I mean maybe this will be something I talk about in 20 years time or something when things are a bit easier but it has cost me money to, to do this work you know like in the first definitely in the first two three years yeah it's it's I don't think I made any hardly any profit or any of that yeah I know that uh, realm but it's worth doing if you can weather it if you can save and be clever with money and, and make it happen it's so worth it because that is what a small business takes it does take uh, perseverance and you keep going and um, you know and me I, well my path right now I'm willing to give it lots of time like if it you know uh, yeah, I, I'm just having too much fun doing what I'm doing. So, um, mm, yeah. See, I was thinking about that today on the way back from the shops. I was thinking about how one, what, what, why one of the reasons why because Martha Stewart she never gets sick, and I was thinking about her auric build and why is that, and you know why is that the way it is. Um, today I had a new thought about that, and one of the things that I thought about that was well. You wouldn't get sick if every day you're like, I can't wait to do what I'm doing. You'd never get sick in that circumstance. If And if you get to do what you want to do every day, that's the most valuable way to live. That's the best way to live. If, if every day you get to do whatever you want, that's that's just such a great way to live. And that's what the pathway of you creating your own business or your path or whatever that is that's what that's going to give you and that's and from that you're going to get health and abundance and all kinds of everything you're going to get everything you want so do that group number three i love this reading let me know how you got on i think you're learning all kinds of amazing things um let me know how you got on in the comments below i'd love to hear from you and i look forward to seeing you next time